Hello and welcome to the More Than Roommates podcast. I'm Dan here with my roommate Graham. Graham, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Dan. Yes. Had a nice kind of moving into the fall weather. Well, it, it's kind of skipping fall, honestly. I'm kind of a little mad about it. Yeah, it's 36 when we're recording this. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's getting so. cold. I'm for it. We're all sweatered up. And we want to say happy Halloween for those of you listening. This is the first ever Halloween episode of More Than Roommates. I know. I feel bad we didn't have time to get a costume this year. Yeah. We wanted to dress up. I've we had were... this episode planned for a long time, and yeah. then it just, everything got in the way. And that last episode, if you haven't watched <laughs> it with Mackenzie, please go and watch it. Uh, you got took, some supreme editing skills and all that. That <laughs> took such a ridiculous amount of time because we record in 4K and having two layers of video recorded in 4K for an hour long, my computer, it took 10 hours to export that video. So please yeah. go give it a view for me. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to get you some RAM. Right. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So a new PC might be on my Christmas list. Um, but. <laughs> There was something that we could try out on uh, YouTube right now. I, they found out that they did an update. And if you invite people to subscribe mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. hears you say, like, click the subscribe button, it'll make that subscribe button, like, glow below the video. And uh, if you click it right now while it's glowing, like, confetti will pop out. So cool. I'm just saying, if you guys aren't subscribed, Try you want to click that subscribe, <laughs> it should be glowing right now. So I think that's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. this is our Halloween episode. We wanted to share some scary stories. We've got our Halloween lights in the background. And also on my other shoulder behind Graham, I hope you can see it. Um, we head. have a new <laughs> clock that was given to us from our friends, but it's a UFO and the pendulum is a guy getting abducted the by abductee. an alien. <laughs> that is hilarious. And it matches our yeah, colors. It's like a perfect match. Color, yes. everything, design. <laughs> so thank you, Amy and Soli, yeah. for that. Pop clocks, right? It was, that so, what it was? Yeah. yeah. We should give them a shout out. Yeah. So, okay, we're in Halloween. It has, we haven't gotten to do a lot of Halloween stuff. We're big Halloween other, guys. Other than this. Yeah, if you, you wanna, see my yeah. sweatshirt, it says, I survived the historic Topeka Cemetery. I bought this sweatshirt. Um, it was really cool. You, We went to a historic cemetery, and they have this group of people, and they stand behind, or they stand at a tombstone, and then they tell you the story about this person's yeah, life. Yeah, the actual person. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's more historical than, but it's just they interesting have some stories. Creepy stories. Yeah, but I like that it's all yeah. true. It's not made up stuff. It's not like a, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I love that. But yeah. what gets you in the Halloween spirit? Like what, what movies or activities do you enjoy? Oh yeah, first Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, been getting Dan in into it. that again too. We uh. It's just like a classic, you know, for me growing up in the 90s, 2000s. Can confirm we will be watching that after we record <laughs> yeah. this episode while I edit. Yeah, that Supernatural, there are a ton of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into movies and creepy like documentaries and stuff. I've been watching, uh, what's it called? So we, uh, we got a new subscription with a different provider because we canceled our TV. Yeah. And um, John Carpenter, he... he I think he was like created Halloween, you know, the whole Michael oh, Myers yeah. thing. He wrote this kind of like true story kind of like mini series, I think on Peacock. That was what we subscribed oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah. And um it's just like a 45 minute to like an hour long episode about like real horror and stuff and crime. It's just wild. Very but, cool. Mm -hmm. So, what and and coffee. Yeah, I know coffee I and all nice, pumpkin uh, spice. Nice little mocha whip on here too. Yeah. <laughs> Almond. So, what would you say is like your top scary movies? Like mm. the one that really freaked you out growing up? Oh god, The Ring. Really? The Ring freaked me out That's when where I was a kid, The Well. <laughs> like, is that where she comes out of the TV? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I heard the dog. I was like, "Are you good, Pookie?" Yeah. She's back there. She, she just got a bath. She's so. looking at the clock, or she was. She's like probably taking that into account. <laughs> yeah, she got a bath, so she's not the happiest camper. 
Yeah. We just got back from camping, so we got to, had to make sure she yeah. was cleaned off. So the ring was the scariest movie. The ring. For you? I mean, it was one of the scariest. I think we've talked about signs mm-hmm. in another episode. You know, the alien. Yeah. Little s- scene in that. Yeah. If we or did we? I don't, I don't know. remember, but mine definitely yeah. was the Blair Witch Project. I don't know. I was really into scary movies already when I watched that one. But at the time, my brothers and I were planning to go camping. And it was going to be my first camping trip without an adult there. Mm -hmm. And I watched that movie. And I'm like, nope, we're canceling it. I can't go. (laughs) Too scary. Um, And then the other one was an alien movie, uh, The Fourth Kind. Oh, yeah. That one really freaked me out. That was a good one. I know it's... We've had a lot of alien stuff this year. I'm not really big on aliens, but that just keeps coming up. It does. Yeah. Sh- shall we tell them? Yes. So we, we decided to have a relaxing evening and just kind of hop in the hot tub, you know, in the evening. It had been like the past two nights before we like would get in and then we saw lightning one night and it started raining the other night. So we were like, finally, chilly evening. Like that cold front came in, we were like, we're just gonna hang out in our hot tub, you know, and relax. Yeah. Well, we're like facing each other. It's just like a small hot tub. We had like a. It's like an Amazon little... inflatable one. Yeah. It's super. Also worth the money if we got it on Prime, Prime Day. Worth and it. I. Didn't have my glasses on, and I can't see anything. Yeah, and I'm looking I had LASIK. Up. So yeah. I I'm, can't see. <laughs> I'm looking up, and I see like, like a toenail crescent thing in the sky and it's lit up and it just flies from one end of the yard over the house and then it disappears doesn't make a noise and i'm like okay it's, that could be like an eye floater like i'm like blinking i'm like was that yeah did I see it or is that just like a reflection so, so me- i don't say anything yeah yeah so meanwhile i'm looking behind him the other way that was behind me so i didn't see that but on the other side of the sky I saw something kind of look like it sort of like dipped when went back behind the clouds. So I told Dan, I was like, ah, uh, there's something really weird. Like that does not look like a plane. You know what I yeah, mean? He wanted it addressed. I wanted to ignore it yeah. and uh, enjoy my hot <laughs> we tub. Just, we literally were in there for what? Not even a five, minute, ten minutes. Yeah. I feel like. It and was then like so Graham, minutes. we were freaking out. Well, okay. We weren't freaked out that freaked out yet oh yeah until we started we just continued to look at the sky right and then we see these big like dark you know things just like floating above us and the bottom of them like it was so close like it literally looked like you could look up and touch it it was so close and it kind of looked like it had like speakers or something you know on the very bottom of it like they were going right above us and and it was just dead silent and it was just they were all over the place yeah and i was starting to like panic i was like you know they announced aliens were real like or ufo you know all the declassified things and i was like that's it we're out in the hot tub for some good reason, run. <laughs> I was oddly calm about it. Like, I was freaked out, but Graham was really freaking out. And I'm like, okay, one of us has to be calm in this situation. And so I'm, like, trying to put the cover back on the hot tub. Because I'm like, okay, truly, if this is happening, like, not much we can do. We're in our mm-hmm. swim trunks, and I'm about to get beamed up. So we run inside. He's I'm freaking out. I'm already on my phone, too. And so I get on yeah. Facebook, and I look, and other people Wrong. around town are posting about this. I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm, it's <laughs> not, not just, just us. just, like, tripping or something. Yeah, and we're, we'll include the video, because we Graham, and yeah. that was the other thing. Once, Graham was taking video on his cell phone, and I'm like, oh, there's it's no way. It's surprisingly picked up decently for like being pitch black out yeah i was too. like there's no way it's gonna pick anything up but yeah. once i saw on his phone that there was video evidence i was like oh my <laughs> gosh yeah so we so can you want to tell us what tell them what we saw <laughs> yeah so we finally i get calmed down a little bit more and we go on to google you know and it ended up being um Starlink, Elon Musk satellites. Thanks, Elon. For, so like, we were giving running around attack, in like... our swimsuit, thinking we were getting abducted, and it was yeah. a satellite just flying <laughs> above us. But they but... were all over. It was and people they were, were freaking in out. Random patterns, like just like like I said, like the altitude. You know, they were flying so low. They orbit. Sorry, orbit. Yeah, so low. It was incredibly creepy. Yeah, but... <laughs> it was. That was 
probably the <laughs> latest scariest thing that had happened <laughs> but for this episode today i figured we would share some ghost stories we've had yeah um, i'm big on the ghost stories i love ghost hunting all that stuff we kind of connected on that yeah when we first met too. yeah i love anything witchcraft spooky you know yeah, i used to same. i was that kid i would play with a ouija board when See, I, was, I would not go that far <laughs> oh i should have i have a ouija board blanket my yeah. friend got me i should have brought that out here um, but I wanted to share the time I visited one of the most haunted places in the United States. So I was a Boy Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, and part of like a big camping trip you can go to is Philmont, New Mexico. And it is all these um, great mountains to hike and explore. You go for two weeks you carry all of your food and all of your belongings on your back. It's very intense. And you, two weeks, we did over 100 miles. We picked like a, a pretty strenuous um, trek. I was 14, which was the minimum age you could go. And of course, I was a very small kid. So before you go out on this trek, they make you stand on a scale and then you put your backpack on and if your backpack may weighs more than like a third of your body weight they make you just take stuff out until it gets down to a third because it you, you can't they don't want people to carry too much like it is very intense so this land it used to be um uh, indigenous people lived there. There were a lot of stories from there. And then, of course, people taking over the land. Boy Scouts has had this property for over 100 years or something, oh. or about 100 years. So they actually own it. Someone gifted or, it. Like oh. something, some guy named Philmont mm. some, donated the land to the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts has been around for like 100 years or something. Um, yeah. But so they have all the stories from the indigenous people that lived there. Then it became like a mining facility. And then now that the Boy Scouts have been hiking on it, a lot of scoutmasters have died because of heart attacks. It's very strenuous. Also, people get lost. People get attacked by bears. The summer we went, there were a lot of bear attacks, so we were on high <laughs> alert. And storms, right? You were telling me, like, you were within, like... Uh, very close proximity of like lightning and yeah we yeah. almost got struck by lightning <laughs> so yeah, sounds intense. we knew i knew going into it that it was very haunted and i was very excited so i think my mom got me a ghost book all with stories related to philmont and it tells you like like a historical thing and then what the legend goes so every night we would be by the campfire i would like read a, a little scary story to everyone and there's this place called the Uraca Mesa. We didn't get to go there, but it's supposedly like that is like the hub of where all the paranormal activity happens there. Um, there there's even like, it used to be a legend. If you look at it on Google Maps, it looks like a skull, like from an aerial view. And in the Creepy. eye of the skull on the Google Earth, it, there was a, a house in the eye of the skull and there was never a house there like if you went in person it's just an open field so that was a lot of it i wanted to go there i hope one day mm -hmm. i can go but there was one story that i knew we were going to come across this area so the story goes back when the um, mountain was a mining facility there's this little girl named clarita and her dad was a miner and one day she was bringing him lunch and they were using hydraulic hoses to chip away at the mine and she accidentally walked in the way of the hose and it <sighs> killed her cut her head off mm -hmm. <laughs> so her mom you know buried her was very stricken with grief and every morning she would come up and the headstone was tilted and so she every day she would straighten it out and put f some flowers on the the tomb and eventually like every morning she would come back up and it was tilted again so eventually she got used to it and um she just let it be a leaning mm -hmm. uh tombstone well you can still go visit the tombstone and i knew we were that was on our trek mm -hmm. so i and i will include pictures and video or pictures i had my disposable camera i should have brought the pictures down they're still upstairs um but there's pictures of and me. other memorabilia. Yeah. yeah. So there are pictures of me like kneeling down as like a 14 year old. I came across her tombstone. 
Now, it looked very fake to me. It has a little white picket fence that obviously people have put around it since then. Um, but it looked too new. I'm like, this hmm. tombstone looks too new, but it's leaning. And the legend is, if you find her tombstone and you straighten it out, you will have bad luck the rest of your trip. But if you put a, a field flower on her tomb, you'll have good luck. So you know me, I straightened it. No, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> mess with it. I put flowers. I was very respectful. and But I was like, I don't think this is it. I think this is someone has set this up to, as a decoy. <laughs> yeah. And so we walked around and then I found a little notch in the ground that with like a stone with some etchings on it. I think that was it. So I made sure to also put flowers on that. And then we walked around a little bit more and we found the old, the foundation of an old house. We just saw like some bricks and you could very clearly tell this used to be a house. Well, while we were there, I looked down and I found some clay pottery, like broken pieces of like an old plate i was like whoa this is cool this could be clarita's house this could have been her plate and so i pick it up and i look at it and i like scary movies so i know what happens and i don't mess with these things like i like it but i know to respect it i'm not so asking for trouble plays with a ouija board <laughs> okay that's true <laughs> so i look at it i show my scout master and my dad's there i'm like this is cool and then i put it back where i found it Every day after that, and I think in like five, six more days we had left of our trip, it poured nonstop. We had rain every day. All of our stuff was drenched. It was miserable. We were getting blisters from having wet socks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what happened? I'm like, did we get cursed? I look in my backpack and what do I find? Ooh. The pieces of pottery. And I'll include a close up video of it. So he was prepared. I got it's show and tell. Yeah. So I can show you. So these are the actual pieces of the plate. It looks almost like China kind of yeah. like a it has sort of like that blue kind of. So I find yeah, decorative these pieces outline. are now in my backpack and I'm freaking out. I'm like, what happened? I put these back and my scoutmaster starts laughing and he's like, I knew how much you enjoyed this. So I grabbed them for you and I put them in your backpack and I was livid. I'm like, you cursed us. Yeah. So I have this cursed pottery and then my scoutmaster is such a troll. He thought it would be <laughs> funny to write me a note and he dipped the paper in his coffee and then burned the edges to make That's it amazing. look like it's a cursed note. Although you probably can't have seen the video. It is like lined paper. It's lined paper <laughs> and it's written in fancy pen. But yeah. I'll read you the note. It says, Daniel, thank you for the flowers. They always make me happy. I used to love to pick the flowers and place them on the table at dinner just before mom would put out the food. Dad would always say how it brought just the right amount of color to mom's cooking. She never thought I was as funny as dad and I. Uh, she never thought that was as funny as dad and I did. I sure hope you enjoyed your travels through my favorite meadows. P.S. Don't worry about mom's plates. I had a talk with her and she knows they are good in good hands. Take care and I hope someday we can you can return. Clarita <laughs> with a heart. Wow. So I think he wrote this after I found the plates and I was freaking out because I'm like, you mm -hmm. cursed us. And so he was like, no, it's okay. I found this note. I'm like, you guys suck. <laughs> so we like that. I do think like because we picked up these plates, we had like rain nonstop. My um, boots fell apart. I was the only one. I had the newest boots of the troop. Um, I had broken them in beforehand, um, but the the sole separated from the and so every night i had to duct tape it and then of course it wasn't mm. waterproof anymore and so my oh it was miserable yeah. so was that towards the beginning of your trip it was or like towards halfway? the it was over halfway oh, thankfully well, that's good that, at least yeah <laughs> and then the other spooky things that happened were as i said um bear attacks were very big that year they were mm -hmm. really had us freaked out about bears and um the the first two nights you sleep you have they send a staffer with you to kind of make sure that you guys will make it through the trip oh and also before you depart you take a group photo and you think it's like oh it's just this like 
nice photo. It's a picture of everyone and you get some keepsake. Well, the guy tells us, he's like, well, actually, the reason we do this is this will be the most up-to-date photo of you. So if you guys go missing, we use this photo as a reference. I'm like, makes sense. Nice. A little grim. Yeah. But... So the guy is with us, and we, of course, are talking about all the bear attacks that there have been. We're freaked out. And he's like, well, bears are scary, but what you really got to look out for are mountain lions. <laughs> he's like, if you see a mountain lion, you're going to die. He was like, that means it's been stalking you for two days and it's ready for you to see it if you see it. Like, he's like, if it were stalking you and it didn't want to be seen, you wouldn't know it's there. I'm like, nice. now I'm freaked out. Yeah. Um, And it was like four days in and we had to filter our own water from a stream and you take like a pump and you fill up your Nalgene's. And so me and my brother and another friend, we were filling up everyone's Nalgene's because it was our turn. And my dad comes out of nowhere and he's like, guys, we need to go. And I'm like, no, we, we're almost done. Like, just give us five more minutes. He's like, no, go now. There's a bear. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> grab all this stuff. And we're walking. And sure enough, off to the distance, we see the bear. And he's off to the side. Like, we could still get to our troop without having to cross his path. And what you're supposed to do if you see a bear, you're supposed to clump together and make yourself look really big. So get tall. And you're supposed to talk to it from far away so you don't sneak up on it and scare it and then it tries to attack mm -hmm. you. So we're just like, hi, bear, hi, bear. And I'm at the back of the line and Steven's in front of me and everyone stops. And I'm like, no, we need to get out of here. So I start pushing on Steven's back and he takes the heel of his shoe and he starts crushing my toes to get me to stop. But I'm just like, no, we need to go. So that bear, luckily it wandered off. It didn't get us. Um, and then Luckily. that night we were in a big field and we get in our tent and all like we all just lay down for the night and we hear this stampede of horses coming and I'm like, it's getting louder and louder. And then I like duck because I'm like, they're about to trample us and all these horses just like run through. I don't see a shadow over my tent or anything. And then I open, unzip my tent. I didn't see any horses. No one in the troop saw the horses, but we all heard the stampede. So wow, it was very, yeah. those were like the two spooky things that happened at Philmont. So if you ever heard of any stories there or go there, it's a very cool place and very yeah. spiritual, just out there and all of that. So I did not do Boy Scouts. Well, okay. I did for like a year or something. A quitter. Like a, yeah. I, he didn't have it. too much. But, um, so Scoutmasters, do they, like, are they allowed to bring, like, tranquilizers mm. or, like, a weapon of any kind? Like, I could understand, like, a probably not bringing, like, an actual, like, handgun Gosh. or something, but you would think, like... I think my Scoutmaster had some extra stuff. I know... So my Scoutmaster was a police officer, so he okay. had some of his own stuff, I think. Gotcha. Um, he... I know he had a flare, a signal flare, in case mm -hmm. we got lost um i know he had a really heavy duty walkie talkie but i don't know who yeah. who I that would probably go wouldn't to. tell you like it'd freak you all out probably maybe too, i don't know he probably would but i was also 14 so i was just like Whoop. um i don't know but yeah, yeah definitely and there every three nights you ended up at like a campsite with staffers mm -hmm. so you had like to reach a certain point at a certain time and if you didn't get there in time they would send a search party out so it was important that you kept moving. So that was also kind of assurance. Like we went to one area and there were a lot of claw marks in the trees and it was mountain lion sharpening, sharpening their claws. Yikes. And so we told that to the, um, the, the camp counselors yeah. or whatever. And they were like, Oh my gosh. And they got in their truck and they had all their rifles and stuff oh, and they okay. took off. Cause you know, yeah. you don't want that near you. So I don't know if they got it or what, but we were like, there's <clears throat> some serious signs of, uh, mountain lions nearby mm -hmm. so luckily we all came back okay yeah my dad a miserable the, Maybe. Ooh. don't forget to take out your trash cans alexa with the reminder only like how many days late <laughs> alexa turn off my reminder three days um but i will say my there was there was She sounded weird. Yeah, it was odd. Something about not connecting to the internet. Yeah. 
Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I will say, so there was like 11 or 12 of us that went, and it was me, my two brothers, and my dad all went, and we struggled the most as mm-hmm. far as like we got injured. Like my boots, boots my yeah. boots fell apart. I fell and like <laughs> busted my knee open. And then you and that knee, I know. And then my brother's backpack, like the support beam broke and like poked, like stabbed him in the back. Yeah. And then my dad rolled his leg the last day. Like we were all like running towards the bus. It was like, the, you know, you're home free. You've been hiking for two <laughs> weeks. And then my dad was like running. And then I think he tripped and fell. I didn't even know until we got back. Oh, that man. he had, It was like people were like had him arm in arm. Oh, man. Yeah. That's rough. So what about Is your- that when you also like had to get the water like every time or something too? Like you kept you had bad luck with. With the, yes like, they had like kind of like a it was like a do like so draw we, straws we elected for... one person to be in charge of and he made the rules and you had to follow him and that helped you know and he's also a kid so he had never done it before but he made it so like the two weeks he had it planned out that on monday it would be me and someone else on water duty on tuesday it was blah 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 and then it repeated the next monday rather than just doing because you didn't also you also didn't run into water every day you didn't know when the next time you would run into water so rather than having it listed like rotate like first time dan will do it and then the second time graham will do it Mm -hmm. it was like oh we ran into water on monday oh we ran into water again on next monday and i'm like but i did it last time and they're like well it's your day i'm like i hate this i'm running away no (laughs) so but yeah that happened yeah so what about your scary stories yes so i've got a couple that are you know a little weird you know like it's hard to know like can you really trust your eyes um but i'm just gonna get into it Mm -hmm. and i'll let y'all decide like if me and my friend were just freaking out it was a uh, dark and stormy night it was a very dark night Mm -hmm. um it was this time of year like kind of right around halloween and uh, me and my friend Amanda, we used to love to just kind of, if we had nothing going on, we we're going to drive around, vibe out. I, I don't think we were 21 yet, so we weren't like really partying, you know? And um, so we're, we're driving around and it's spooky season. So we want to go kind of like look at some haunted places in town, right? And um, I, it was maybe like a few years before there was a TV show. I don't know if you remember Paranormal State. It, it was just one of those like A and E type, you know, ghost shows. I think it ended up being like he ended up like being known to be a fraud or yeah, something. As most of them are. Yeah, but they came here to town oh, cool. to investigate this church called the Harrison Church. And it was really super old, you know, there's like a lot of like local you know, lore about it being yeah. really haunted and really creepy. It uh kind of sat on like a corner. Um, just keep that in mind. So um, we decided we're gonna drive by and just see. You know, because we watched the episode of the show and they were calling it like a demonic church or uh, I don't know. Like they were saying it was one of the like most haunted places. You know, in mm-hmm. Kansas or something, right? Yeah. So um. We're rolling around, and Amanda had, like, a late 90s little Dodge Neon, and the headlights were, like, kind of, like, dim. They were just halogen, and they were pointed down a little bit. So we, we get over to the church, and she's driving, and we're, we're going by the church. It's on my right, and I'm kind of looking at it, you know, looking. It was a big, you know, pretty decent-sized church for, you know, its day, I'm sure. And I'm looking up. And I kind of see, like, a figure in, like, the top window of, like, you know, there were a lot of windows on the front. And um, it didn't move or anything, but so I'm looking at it. And then Amanda turns a corner, you know, like I said, it's on the corner. So we're we're looking again, and I'm like, oh, you should, you know, turn around. I think I saw something. And um, so she turns around, and uh, so now I'm looking kind of over her shoulder and she's trying to like look and you know she's still driving because we're you know in like a kind of like a neighborhood or whatever it was just kind of in like a random place in an old part of town and um she looks at me and um she was like where did this person come from and I look forward and like the headlights like there was someone something in the middle of the road 
that looked like it was like walking towards us Ooh. and um it, it was the weirdest thing like it looked like it was like had like a long black robe or something but um like i was looking you know watching you could see like the torso and like it looked like it was hooded or something you know you could, it was, but you couldn't see any features and um the headlights like hit like the where like feet or legs should be and it just like was no longer there and like i didn't know if i was actually just seeing something right but, um Amanda and I looked at each other and she screamed and like I've never seen someone like crank a steering wheel so fast like she slammed on the brakes she cranked the wheel and then she floored it like popped the curb threw it in reverse like floored it in reverse and then we took off the other direction like we couldn't even continue down by the church like it was just the weirdest thing and she was like bawling i think wow. or, and we were just like panicked and uh i remember calling my dad like he was always very superstitious about everything and he was like that's why dude i tell you not to mess, mess around with that stuff and nothing good ever happens late at night and you know like he's just being my dad right? yeah <laughs> but um we were just like I don't know. It was just like the weirdest thing. It's crazy you know when I mean? two like, people experience it. Like you both saw things. So like yeah. that makes it even scarier, I'm sure. Yeah. So anyway, so we we went back in the daytime like a couple days later and we're driving by, you know, just to see. Yeah. They had a, at the time they were trying to renovate this church into like a kind of like for public use, like a, I don't know what, it, like the YWCA or okay. something like that, like a community center. Yeah. And um, they they had caretakers and they stuffed like a big plush, like skeleton, like stuffed skeleton up in that window. So that was what I actually saw, oh, you know, when we were. But the figure, you still. figure thing, I have no idea. Ugh. It was weird, but we did go back one more night just to like, you know what I mean? See if anything happened. So we did the same route, you know, we went around, went around the block, turned around didn't see anything and so we decided to go by one more time well um it it was like you know we didn't really see anything but um i kept like you know we were looking amanda's looking in her rear view mirror and i'm looking in the side mirror and we did see something that looked like it was hobbling again or whatever but we would like look behind us and it would like it didn't look like anything was there so I don't know. It was just one of those weird things. Yeah. And then in 2013, it randomly burned to the ground. Like the church just randomly. So who knows what Mm -hmm. actually happened? It could have, you know, it could be that situation where people were whoever invested in it that was trying to renovate it determined this is like a, a lost cause I don't know, maybe you never know yeah but um it was pretty pretty wild that is crazy yeah so it's not there anymore wow but, um one other one other story yeah um so we have this we used to have meningers it was mm-hmm. like a mental health institution mm-hmm. like it was we were like world renowned for like you know care for you know psychiatric conditions and i'm sure they did lobotomies and yeah it's like all kinds of like stuff what, like the, when you think of like an insane asylum is like yes, what the, like the non-appropriate kinda. word to say but yeah yeah so the clock tower is still standing mm-hmm. and there are some buildings you know that are still there today and they're you know reno- a couple of the property you know some of it's been renovated i think they're working you know the clock tower it's really pretty we'll have to put a picture yeah out there um but uh, we, I went out with a different group of friends. We watched Supernatural, and then it, I think it was around Halloween again, or like September, October, you know. And we thought, oh, you know, let's go into Meningers or whatever. Like back in like the two thousands, you could like drive all the way up there. It wasn't completely blocked off, and people would go in there, and it was really scary. But yeah. um, so we were, we were making our way up it's pitch black like i'm kind of like psychic like amping myself up Mm -hmm. like what are we doing you know like it was kind of freaky and i had shorts on like it was one of those years where it wasn't horrible out yeah um but so we're you know where like the governor's trails are there's like our the governor's mansion is kind of off 
to this property. You could park down there and it, it technically closed after dark. You right, know? right, right. But we're walking through the trails to get up to go up there and my legs just keep getting like sandblasted. Like it was just like so windy. It was picking up like uh, gravel dirt and, stuff. and gravel and stuff or well, maybe not gravel, but just like fine sand. And uh, it was just such a spooky night. And uh, we're we're talking, you know, like kind of trying to hype each other up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, we ended up seeing like a flashlight, like shine on us. So oh, no. So we all like tried to dive in like a bush or whatever, but we got caught by the cops. It oh was no! TBD. Oh no! And they were, I guess, they like were training dogs up there at one point. <gasps> oh or gosh! Something. That, no dogs were there then. Yeah, but um. <laughs> The the dude, I don't even remember who it was. Whoever was, like, kind of leading the group just, uh, like, made up this story. Like, he was a photographer or something, and he was like, yeah, I was trying to scope out, you know, this place for my friend's wedding. And um, nice. we, uh, we um, told our friends we were coming up here, and they said they were going to drive up and shoot us with paintballs. So that's why we dove into the grass or wow, whatever. Wow, that's thinking but quick on your feet. I know. Oh, wow. It was pretty impressive. Like yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, they ended up letting us go. They were just like, well, what are you guys doing Yeah, they here? just knew you, you were know? some teenagers. So, like, I'm, gl- uh, I'm glad. I feel like if we had made it up there and actually went into Minigers, like, that would have been weird. Like, yeah. You, we'll have to put some interior pictures. Yeah. Like, there's still, like, beds and stuff. It's very and, like, creepy. It, it's so weird. Yeah. But, awesome yeah those were like two of like my top like weird you know obviously that one didn't end up having like a paranormal thing to it that you know of maybe the cops weren't even real yeah (laughs) ghost cops oh you have to tell them about your story yeah on those grounds too yeah, yeah so i so the clock tower there it was at risk of being torn down and it's a historical landmark at this point and so i was doing news stories covering it and i was getting footage of the exterior during the day and this old woman comes out of nowhere and she's wearing normal clothes and she's like what are you doing i'm like oh i'm doing a story about the clock tower and i'm getting footage and she's like well you know what you need to get footage of no one knows that there's a cemetery back here and i'm like oh yes let me go follow this old woman (laughs) into the woods by myself (laughs) so i follow her and sure enough we like go off the trail and there's like rows of about 10 to 20 um tombstones like very overgrown and i don't think anyone knew about it you are from here and you didn't know that that was there so i bend down and i'm like getting footage of it and then i look up and she's gone that's so weird didn't see her didn't say goodbye didn't get her name it was someone probably being like we're here yeah it was someone acknowledge our existence definitely very spooky and so i brought you and some friends back there to show and yeah sure enough the tombs Tomes were still there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We went back in the daytime. Yeah. You remembered where to find it. It took too, me a bit, but, but I did find it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's a weird um, area up there. Yeah. For sure. Very weird energy. <laughs> yeah. But I hope you guys have a safe Halloween. Yeah, Enjoy yeah. the spooky season. It doesn't have to stop after October. We'll yeah. be celebrating all year round. And if you guys have yeah. any scary stories, let us know. Drop them below. Yeah. yeah. And as always, Like, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing on the podcast. Again, watch last episode. That took me a lot of time, and I wanted to get the credit. Um, Yeah, but that should be Mackenzie out. Yeah, Mackenzie. She's fun. Having our first guest on, it was so fun. Very cool. Awesome. Well, you guys have a good rest of your day. All right. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.